Hello again, boat builders. Of late, I have been building another classic boat replica, a Cape Cod cat boat designed and built by the famous Crosby family called Trio. The plans call for a solid mast of length 20 feet with a base diameter of 4 and 3 quarter inches, tapering to 2 inches at the tip. If I make it of cypress as the plans specify, it would weigh in at about 100 pounds. So, to make the boat more easily trailerable, I plan to lighten the mass by making it hollow and of two parts. This video will examine the strength considerations one confronts when replacing a solid mass with one of hollow cross section. Several years ago, I put together a series of three YouTube videos discussing the processes of the layout, the construction, and the sheathing of hollow masts. Thinking back, I did not cover the calculations relating to the strengths of these previous projects. I probably shied away from discussing the strength of a hollow mass or spar in relation to its solid version for good reason. As I will explain later, designing any wood mast or boom without a repeated trial and error improvements is a fool's game, except for a simplified case, which I will get into. Anyway, I thought I'd share with you my design process for building a hollow mast of equal strength to the solid mast shown in the Mystic Seaport plans. But first, let me try to convince you that making a hollow mast is worth the effort. A mast that weighs less has advantages and making a hollow mast is a good way to achieve that. Less mast weight has several practical consequences. Go to your favorite lumber yard and, starting with a 2x4 of the length of your proposed mast held horizontally, stand it upright. Then repeat the process, if you can, with a 2x8 of the same length. Now imagining it's your mast, think about doing the same thing on an uneven and sometimes rocking deck of a boat. Even with proper preparation, raising a mast can be risky business. An extra weight makes the process much more difficult. But arguably more important, the mast weight affects the sailboat's performance. The weight of the mast alters the position of the boat's center of gravity to a greater degree, pound for pound, than other parts of the vessel because the mast center of gravity is comparatively further from the boat's center of gravity. This effect is even more noticeable on smaller craft where the mast weight is a proportionally greater percent of the total weight. A lighter mast lowers the boat's center of gravity. Other advantages. A hollow mast provides a conduit for halyards and electrical wires reducing windage, and if sealed, the mast will provide additional buoyancy. Today's boat builders are faced with an increasingly difficult time finding good wood products, and when they do, the cost is often out of reach. Building a hollow mast allows one to use off-the-shelf lumber. The cost savings more than pays for the cost of the required additional gluing. Engineered wood products like glue lamb, beams, and plywood have proven themselves to be stronger pound for pound than traditional wood beams and boards. Their use in boat building has transformed how we now build wooden boats. For example, I replaced the trio's steam bent ribs with nine ply laminated ribs and the hull's planks with fiberglass sheathed glued strips. A laminated mast, solid or hollow, gains considerable strength over a traditional solid pole. In this close-up of a hollow mast, one can see how the grain structure in a stave is reinforced by the opposing grain of adjacent staves, effectively increasing the internal strength of the wood. Okay, there are disadvantages. To obtain the same design strength and stiffness of a comparable solid wooden mask, the outside diameter of a hollow mast must be increased slightly with a consequent increase in windage, or it must be sheathed with fiberglass to make up for the strength loss due to its hollowness. More on that later. And it takes more knowledge and time to construct a hollow wooden mast compared to one that is of solid cross section. But all in all, it is no wonder then that all modern masks of either composite or aluminum are made hollow. If you should choose to build a mast of wood, whether it is hollow or solid, either choice, it obviously must be strong enough to meet the test of use. Scientists have known for centuries how stresses are distributed within vertical columns like masts and have developed elaborate formulas to predict the effects of the forces required in various scenarios. 
These formulas, some of which we will look at later, require the input of extrinsic properties, such as the shape and dimensions of the mast, and intrinsic properties, such as the wood's tensile strength and elasticity. However, when engineers use these formulas to design columns made of wood like masts, they find that the accuracies of their calculations are greatly dependent on the inconsistencies of the intrinsic properties and, in the case of wood, the variability of these properties within a single piece of timber. These calculations have proved unreliable, and as a consequence, they have instead, like our ancestors, resorted to trial and error testing. Presumably, the Crosby boat builders did just that, and we therefore can take as a given that the size of the mass provided in the plans is of adequate strength and stiffness to meet the expected forces experienced when sailing. Our design considerations are therefore greatly simplified. We need only to calculate what changes must be made to our hollow mass in order to, for it to be as stiff and as strong as the solid mass in the plans. Here is one of many formulas that would be used by engineers to design masts. Don't give up on me here. We are examining them only to get a feeling for what properties of our mast give it stiffness. This one, Euler's formula, which is the, the maximum force before the mass breaks, is equal to pi squared divided by 4 times E times I divided by the length squared. We'll get into what this means. This force is a, what downward force on our mast would cause it to bend and then eventually buckle and break, maximum force. In it, we can see all the variables that we can potentially modify to assure that the hollow mast that we are going to build is as strong as the solid mass laid out in our plans. Here's another formula. It predicts the amount of deflection our mask will have if it's pushed on by a horizontal force. And this deflection is equal to the force that is applied times the length cubed divided by three times this quantity EI, which we'll get into. Again, notice that the deflection is controlled by these three, same three variables, the length and this term E times I. So let's look at these three variables. L stands for the length of the mast. In most cases, we will be replacing the solid mast with a hollow one of the same length. So this term is usually, but not always, unchanging and therefore a constant in our equation. More on this later. E stands for the modulus of elasticity of the wood being used to build the mast. This is a number determined by measurement in a lab and can be found in tables available on many internet sites. For example, our plan specifies Cyprus, which from the table is 1.44 times 10 to the 6. We have the option of using other words than specified in the plans and can therefore increase or decrease the mass strength and stiffness depending on the wood we choose. For example, I will be using Douglas fir with a modulus of 1.83, which is about 25% stiffer and stronger. But remember, these values should be taken with a grain of salt, since wood properties are highly variable. Earlier, I asserted that a laminated mast, hollow or solid, would be stronger than a solid mast made from just one piece of wood. Here is a chart developed by a research group in Great Britain. Each of the curves represents the strength test results from many samples of the same wood species. The left sample represents the results from testing many samples of solid wood. The middle curve represents the test results from sampling a laminated beam of the same wood species. And the right curve represents the strength of the same beam shape and everything, except it's been sheathed with a stronger material on the, on the outside. Let's look at the curves for the laminated beam and the solid beam. We notice that the average strength of the solid beam is lower, about 10% lower, than the laminated beam. But we also notice that its variability, the strength of the different samples, some were quite weak and some were much stronger than average. That variability is greater in the solid beam than it is in the lamin laminated beam. And because designers were designed using the weakest results, 
and they're designed for their mast, you can see that in the real world, the laminated beam is close to 50% stronger than the, the uh, solid beam of the same wood species. Likewise, we see the design strength of the sh sheath beam is more than double what the solid beam is. One will not find tables with values of E for laminated wood species. They are available on a product by product basis from the manufacturers. However, based on studies like the one discussed here, we can conservatively say the increase in the value of E for our laminated mast is at least 10% greater than the value listed for a particular species of wood. And the value of E for a sheath mast is even greater depending on the materials used. I in our formula stands for area moment of inertia, or inertia for short. Inertia is a calculated value. It represents the strength and stiffness of a beam, or in our case a mast, resulting from its cross-sectional shape. The calculation is done with formulas, which, though related, differ slightly based on the shape of the cross-section. For a mast of circular cross-section, the formula is inertia of a circle is equal to pi times the OD to the fourth power minus the ID to the fourth power at all divided by 64. Note that the inertia, it only depends on the OD and the ID of our mask and therefore does not change with the type of wood that we use to build the mask or if it's laminated or not. To use trios mast as an example, the plants call for a diameter of four and three quarters inches. So we, if we plug that into our formula, the inertia of the solid mask in the plants is equal to pi times 4.75 to the fourth power minus zero to the fourth power because this mask is not hollow and doesn't have an ID. That divided by 64. And if we do the math, that comes out to be the uh, inertia of a solid mask of 4.75 inches is 25. Back to our formulas. We can see that the maximum downward force our mask can take, predicted by Euler's equation, and the stiffness, predicted by the second equation, are dependent on the three properties we have discussed. Length, modulus of elasticity, and inertia. These values are indirectly specified in the plans. Given the wood species, cypress in our case, we can look up the modulus of elasticity E, while the dimensions provided in the plans allow us to easily calculate the inertia I. And this is the critical point. If we design a hollow mast with the product of E times I having the same value as that specified for the solid mass given in the plans, the strength and stiffness of our hollow mast will be equal to that of the solid mast. Put it another way, we can forget the formulas. We need only to determine the values of E and I for the mast in our plans and make sure that the values of their product E times I does not exceed the product of those values we design into our hollow mask replacement. In review, what are the takeaways from this video? First, we see that a hollow mast has important advantages over a solid mast. Second, the strength of a hollow mast, contrary to what some others have stated in blogs and YouTube videos, can be made equal to or greater than the solid mass that it will replace. And third, the calculations to ensure that our hollow mast replacement is as strong and as stiff as the original solid mast are quite straightforward, easy peasy. In my next video, I will in detail go through the steps of designing a replacement hollow mast for the vintage Crosby catboat I am building. We will use the simple shortcuts developed here. Until then, and in preparation, those of you who are serious about making a hollow mast might find the values of E and I for your project. See you soon.